Hey everyone, welcome back to Hakuoki. It's about that time again. We're gonna play some more Hakuoki. I'm very excited about this. As always, thank you to Sprawl Rat for all of the love and care. And what happened last time? We had a lot of things happen. Um, our dear old brother came into town, was like, hey, I'm not actually your friend. I'm gonna really mess you up now. And I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. Um, so that happened. We learned pretty much a lot of the backstory of who we are as a character, who Chizuru is, and that was that was awesome. <laughs> that was actually really gratifying, a lot more than I thought it would be. We're not the uh, lowly medicine man's daughter that we thought we were. We were actually a secret vampire lady the whole time. So that's cool. Meanwhile, Soji is uh, kind of hun hunkered over, uh, totally not dead at all. Actually, uh, let me show you this. This is a new one. On our status screen, we now have uh, Soji has a corruption bar in case we needed more video game in here. Which, fair, fair enough, we actually could use a little more love. But look who also does. Uh, Heiske also has a corruption bar, which is like... Oh, <laughs> things have gotten really real, and that sucks. Now I kind of feel bad, like, maybe if I could have paid more attention to Toto and understood how we got to this point. But, yeah. So, yeah, that's an interesting turn of events. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna dive right back in. It was nighttime. Okita sat alone, gazing up at the sky. What was he thinking, I wondered. I thought about calling out to him, but hesitated. What are you doing? Just get over here already. Okay. I walked over and sat down quietly next to him. In the light of the stars, his face looked pale. Whether it was a trick of the light or a pallor of the skin, I couldn't tell. Probably a little of both, though. How are you feeling? You mean my sickness, or are you being a fury now? Or about being a fury now. Wasn't sure how to answer that. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. It's been a little rough during the day, but my body seems to be healing up pretty good. He gave me a cheerful grin. They told me if I get some rest, I shouldn't have any problems swinging around a sword like I used to. Something in his voice suggests he was trying to convince himself as much as he was trying to convince me. But he's kind of always done that anyway. It's always been... A struggle getting him to even give us the slightest details about how he's feeling. Really? It's winter now, though. Sitting outside at night stargazing can't be good for your health. Oh, I can handle this easy. It's not that cold. Because you don't have any tactile feeling anymore. I don't know. Just shooting the breeze here. Being in bed all the time is depressing. Seems worse for my body, too. All right, well, that might be true, but Kyoto winters aren't anything to scoff at. Please, get inside. Yeah, yeah, I know. Still, cold's not something I've ever minded. Okay, I suppose it's kind of bracing. Yeah. It's been getting colder, though. I think it might snow. Yeah? I opened my mouth and then shut it again. I'd run out of things to say. How's the weather? How about that baseball team? Oh wait, that hasn't been invented yet. And neither has Wither. Weather. Okita was quiet as well. His eyes were trained to the sky and he was perfectly still, like a statue carved from ice. Hey. What? Chose this myself. Pretty stupid of you to blame yourself. Hey, we got duped. Kinda. I mean, we knew what was happening, uh, but... The other, I think uh, the other party, what's what's his name, did not know that we knew as much as we knew. But it's all good. Anything's better than tuberculosis. His feigned derision couldn't hide the warmth of his smile. What do you mean? Momentarily distracted by his grin, I didn't immediately catch what he meant. He laughed. You blame yourself, right? For me drinking the water of life? We should really rename this. Um... No. Don't give me that. You could, couldn't lie to a baby, so stop trying to pull one over on me. You don't need to worry about it, okay? That was my decision. I don't regret it. 
Felt like I should speak, but I didn't know what to say. We sat there in silence for a few more minutes, and then he turned to me again. His smile was gone. <sighs> I'm really digging this idea of the corruption, especially in a love story. Corrupted love. You shouldn't get involved with a guy like me. Yep, still probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't at all get involved with a guy like you. But the eyes, like, the eyes, every time I see the eyes, I'm just like, ugh. Why do you have emeralds inside of your face, Skull? What was I supposed to say to that? Apparently some part of me knew because I heard myself murmur, No. No. I returned his gaze, forcing myself to look just as solemn as he did. You go, Chizuru. Just stick it to his face hole. Be like, no. Can't tell me how to feel about myself. Get out of here, Soji. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? I said no. <laughs> Man, what kind of woman are you? Won't even cut an invalid any slack. Damn straight I won't. Care way too damn much about this. He sighed dramatically and slumped as if suddenly weak. Yeah, that's right, my feelings make you weak. Deal with it! Hey, you can't just act like you're sick when you want to some when you want something. It's not fair. Yeah, yeah, I really am sick though. Like, seriously. I'm I'm not just sick, I, I'm dead. There's nothing alive in here anymore. His words cut into my heart just as deeply as any sword. No, don't say that. How can you be dead? You're here with me, talking and moving around. A corpse can't do that. True, but whatever's doing this talking and moving, it's it's not human. There is a philosophical quandary somewhere in there. Something that harkens all the way back to Shelley's Frankenstein. The body is in motion, the body is animated, an animated uh, being, but is somehow not human? I, I don't know what you see, but I drank that stuff, I felt it, and I know what I am now. Okay, not human, fine. I, I, I can dig it. I stopped coughing too. Ah! Guess it heals more than wounds, huh? It's not like there isn't a price to pay, though. Trying to do anything during the day is, uh, well, it's rough. And if I can't go out during the day, I can't help you find your dad. So I can't really see how much, how I'm much used to you. Why would you stay with someone who's already dead if... I don't want you around just because you're useful. I jumped, surprised that I had yelled so loud. Ha <laughs> ha! So what if your body's changed? You're still the same inside. Okita I've known for so long is the same Okita that's sitting here right now. I don't care if you're dead or alive or human or what, you're still you. I'm, I'm still him, huh? And besides, even if you aren't human anymore, it doesn't... I bit my lip. I mean, I'm not human either. As we're all finding out together! Hey, look who decides to blossom. Thank you, baby. Oh, yeah, you, you aren't, are you? Corner of his mouth twitched in the beginning of that familiar wry smile. I never really thought about that. Guess it didn't really matter, you know? I do know that it doesn't matter. It never mattered to me either. If you're dead or not, or if you're human or not, that's not important. You're you. You are you, and that's, that's what is. Ah. <sighs> All right then, do what you want. He gave me a crooked sort of grin. I think I will. I will do whoever I want. Somehow my chin had acquired something of an arrogant tilt. Glad Cheezeru's coming into her own now. Good, I hope she keeps this up. She's kind of a badass when she, gets, she feels like it. The night of the battle at Aburano Koji was a turning point for the Shinsengumi, I'd say. <laughs> oh, most of our officers are now demons. So that's new. For the men who didn't know the details, it was simply a battle against their former comrades, the guardians of the Imperial Tomb. Those better informed knew that the situation with the Satsuma of Ryomo, uh, Ryomo Sakamoto had been part of a much larger plan. Only the heads of the Shinsengumi knew the whole story, the activities of the demons, and Okita and Heisuke's transformation into Furies. 
Such an important battle had stirred up the atmosphere in the compound, and for several days there were, there were excited men everywhere, shouting and talking. Moments of silence few, uh, moments of silence were few and far between. I felt I would only be in the way if I was wandering around the ground, so I did my best to stay in my room by myself. When, when had everything gone so wrong? Why had all of this happened? It's like, it's weird because the source has always been the politics. And that's kind of the, one of the strongest bits that I'm, I'm surprised how strong of a bit it was, but how this ties into the political history that has kind of been wrapping its finger around the plot is amazing. Um, everything that the demons have done so far has been at the behest of some kind of political organization in this feudal Japanese era, and all of the stuff that we are doing has also been subtly prompted by these historical events, or as, as we are playing through them now, modern political happenings, the, the political happenings of the contemporary time, and it's like, damn, all because of, like, weird little one-off decisions, just, they seem so small, and they kind of they aren't even glossed over, because they, like, repeat when, like, big political things happen in the game. They repeat it a couple times. Just, they just did that. They were like, by the way, that Haruda thing just happened with these other clans and the Satsumas, and yeah. It's interesting how these little decisions kind of make all these much larger changes. And they help cement our feelings for each other. Like I'm having done with Soji. I turned those questions over and over in my mind but I found no answers. It is a really good question, though. How did things go? How did things end up the way they were? Ah, thank goodness you're here. If you'd gone out, I wouldn't have been able to look for you. Sanan, it's daytime. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, yes, I've just had a revelation. I can't possibly stay in bed. His eyes glittered with something, and even though he was smiling, I could feel the fingers of dread begin to poke at the base of my spine. Well, will you listen to my idea? It didn't really seem like a question, but I nodded anyway. You're a demon. The words were sudden and unexpected. And as a demon, you're stronger, faster, and more resilient than a human. Demonic superiority was displayed quite clearly by those demons who attacked us just the other night. What's your point, Sinan? A demon possesses immense power. It follows that the blood which flows through demon veins should be similarly powerful. Perhaps it is even potent enough to completely counteract the madness of the Furies. I didn't know how the Water of Life worked, but Sanan's explanation seemed logical and manic. How can you know that for sure? Since before I became a Fury, I've been researching how the Water of Life works. I know more about it than anyone else here. How could I be wrong then? Oh, I don't know. Like, you could just be outright wrong. Like, really wrong. In any event, I believe it's worth testing. If I am correct, oh, it would be wonderful. Your very existence could save the Fury Corps. No, the entire Shinsengumi. Wait, I'm not being manipulated at all here. Thanks for playing my emotions, dickbag. Sinan's eyes had grown painfully sharp, and I almost thought I could hear the barest edge of madness to his voice. And apparently he pulled a sword on me. I don't know if he, like, literally did, or that's just a metaphor, but... Calmly and purposefully... Oh, he drew his sword from his scabbard. There was no madness or bloodlust to his movements, and they only made them all the more terrifying. He wants my body. And there's... he wants my body, like, literally. I don't know if I like that. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not going to kill you or anything. That's gross. Please stay away. I just want a small sample of your blood, that's all. I took a step back, too. I took two. Big. I, I just... I, I started walking the other way, actually. Sonon and his sword came closer. He lifted it, and the steel blade shimmered in the light. I closed my eyes. What is this, Sanan? Oh, thank you, Batman. Hijikata, excellent timing. Please, give me a hand here. Hijikata? 
Yuji kind of walked slowly towards us, his hand drifting near the hilt of his sword. With calm purpose, he stepped between Sanan and I. What, what are you doing? This could be a great breakthrough for the Shinsengumi. This is the last time, Sanan. What are you doing? I'm searching for a way to treat the madness of the Furies for the good of the Shinsengumi. And that means you have to cut her. Like, you're seeing, like, what this looks like, right? I'm not going to kill her. I only need a little of her blood. The room was thick with tension, but I sensed no hatred from either Sanan or Hijikata. We've lost so many of the Furies. Many of our human soldiers have fallen as well. If we are to effectively utilize the Furies we have left, as well as the ones we are about to create, we must find a way to temp their mad temper their madness. If we abandon the Furies and what they offer, then future battles will only become more difficult. More of our men will die. Everything I do, I do for the Shinsengumi. I know you for an intelligent man, Hijikata. Surely you understand. And yet you won't allow Yukimura to share her blood? That's not what I meant. Oh? Sanan, you are a colonel of the Shinsengumi. Are you really ready to break the code? The code says we don't fight each other for any reason. You haven't forgotten, have you? Ah, of course. However, Yukimura is not technically a member of the Shinsengumi. Maybe not, but she's been here long enough, she might as well be. Then I have no choice. With that, Sanan sheathed the sword. Hijikata watched him closely, his own hand still near his sword. I'll leave for now. Then, please consider what I've said. Sure, but it won't change anything. Why should we cut her open and take her blood? Besides, even if I change my mind, Kondo will never let you do it. <sighs> it's an easy decision for you and Kondo to make. You don't have the same investment in this. Heisuke's a fury now, too. This will affect him as well. So I encourage you to consider what's best for your friends when you make your decision. Those final words cut like a knife deeper than anything he'd said before. Can... Can I say something? He just caused his voice was strained as if he were pulling it up from somewhere deep within his soul. Of course. Your reasoning is correct. It always has been. But, Sanan, tell me you aren't doing this because the bloodlust is taking your mind. Tell me that some sick desire to taste her blood isn't what's driving you to do this. Can I trust you? It's a weird... It's just this weird thing, it's like, tell me you're not doing it because you're horny, or tell me you're not doing it because you feel like it, tell me you're not doing it because you feel like you have some kind of ownership of another person's body, or another person's space, or another person in general. There's some, there's some metaphors here that are kind of gross. I don't, I just don't know. <sighs> Can I trust you? Of course, you can trust me. My only concern is for the Shinsengumi. Goodbye then, Yukimura. We'll talk again. He smiled and ducked out of the room. <sighs> Thing about uh, blood in literature and uh, especially when it comes to lore like vampires is that Blood is always a metaphor for trading fluids, like as in sex. Basically, it's sex. So, if we don't have consent to trade our own bodily fluids, that's not okay. And that's why that situation got really gross, and it seemed like that. Only after I'd heard his footsteps fade away down the hall did I begin to breathe again. If we are going to trade our own blood, we're going to do it on our own terms. We're going to do it willingly. And nobody else is going to be able to tell us how to do it. 